world now is a world where a single click can topple different empires. And as such, Nigeria continues earnestly to seek ways to fortify its digital frontier. But how powerful are the initiatives currently in place for the nation to survive the coming onslaught of cyber threats? How well fashioned are these platforms upon which Nigeria's emerging digital democracy drive will be established? These are some of the questions which we will be forming the, I mean, the core of our deliberation today, even as we look at the one government cloud solution in a bid to safeguard Nigeria's sovereignty, even as we forge on in this digital democracy. With that, I say welcome to the being where curiosity meets conversation, taking us a step further into the future we desire. I'm Sunes Nathaniel, but before we proceed, let's quickly give you a quick tech update. And afterwards, we'll begin this prime and very pertinent conversation. Don't go away, stay with us. Hello and welcome again. Here is a quick tech update for the week. Meta has removed 63,000 Instagram accounts tied to sextortion scams in Nigeria following a $220 million fine from Nigerian authorities. The purge included 2,500 profiles connected to a 20-person network. Additionally, Meta deleted 1,300 Facebook accounts, 200 pages, and 5,700 groups from promoting scams. Sextortion schemes deceive victims into sharing explicit images then extort money by threatening public exposure. Meanwhile, digital strategist Toby Ayeni has stressed the importance of localizing artificial intelligence to maximize its potential. Speaking on Channel Television's The Morning Brief, Ayeni, the founder of Miss Techie, argued that AI should be tailored to Nigeria's context to drive innovation and growth, noting current efforts fall short. In the meantime, authorities have warned organizations to bolster its security after a spike in cyber attacks in Guernsey. The Office of the Data Protection Authority reported that phishing attacks compromised some Microsoft 365 systems. Now, criminals are increasingly bypassing security measures, including multi-factor authentication. Organizations are advised to adopt a layered security approach to mitigate risks. Now, meanwhile, with Vice President Kamala Harris emerging as a Democratic frontrunner, the tech industry is rallying behind her. Prominent figures like former Facebook CEO Sheryl Sandberg, Netflix co-founder Reed Hastings, and philanthropist Melinda French Gates are endorsing Harris. This support contrasts with a smaller faction back in former President Donald Trump, including Elon Musk, highlighting the divide within the tech industry ahead of the 2024 election. In another development, Meta must intensify efforts against non-consensual deepfake pornography. The Oversight Board has declared current measures are deemed insufficient, and the Board is urging stricter policies and enhanced protection technologies. They're also calling for better support for the victims. Now, these recommendations are follows of various cases involving deepfake images of high-profile women in India and the United States. Twice the yearly AIDS shots were 100% effective in preventing new infections amongst women. A study published on Wednesday has revealed in a trial involving about 5,000 participants in South Africa and Uganda, no infections occurred in those receiving the shots, compared to roughly 2% infection rates in those on daily prevention pills. Salim Abdul Karim, an AIDS Research Center director, praised the results as stunning. And that's your quick tech update for the week. Stay tuned for more insights into the ever-evolving world of technology. I'll see you next time. All right, welcome back to the Beam. As Elia mentioned, today we're going to be examining the One Government Cloud Solution as a platform for safeguarding Nigeria's sovereignty in the wake of the myriads of cyber threats. Uh, joining me right now to answer questions regarding this platform is the Executive Director and Digital Technological Services of Galaxy Backbone, Mr. Olumbe Akinkube. I hope I got that right, sir. You're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. All right. I hope it's Akinkube. Well, yeah, you, you try it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm trying to put the tone in yeah, there. Okay, let, let's, let's set the ball rolling by asking, you know, give us a brief about Galaxy Backbone. Okay, so Go Galaxy Backbone is a limited liability company owned by the federal government. Uh, so we're a government company, but we're also... We also have a private side, uh, being a limited liability company. The whole idea around Galaxy Backbone was uh, set up by the government to provide uh, infrastructure and shared services 
uh, basically towards harmonization of uh, data for government uh, ministries, departments, and agencies, and provide uh, sort of uh, an infrastructure, uh, IT infrastructure organization that would provide MDAs and the government as a whole um, an opportunity to be able to uh, digitalize uh, their activities using um, a secure, stable, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, a shared services platform, basically leveraging on the economies of scale. So as opposed to having disparate, um, disparate uh, uh, sources of data, disparate um, uh, network infrastructure across all the MDAs, mm. the whole idea was to have a company and which was which was birthed Galaxy uh, Backbone as that company to provide a platform uh, for infrastructure, uh, IT infrastructure for government uh, MDAs. All right, that's beautiful. I think that ushers us into the discussion for today. Uh, the one government cloud solution platform. It's a very important one, like yeah. we have always said. And uh, the first question for me would be, what really is this, you know, one government cloud solution? What really is it? So the one government cloud uh, solution is basically a software and infrastructure as a service uh, solution birthed by Galaxy Backbone. Um, now, th I need to tie that, that, that into um, what the uh, Honorable Ministers of the Information, Dr. Bosu Tijani's uh, strategic plan document, uh, policy document, which speaks to through uh, digitalization uh, of government MDAs. And um, one government cloud, as I mentioned, is um, a software as a service and infrastructure as a service platform that basically en en enables um, governments to be able to uh, do this. Um, this was also lends credence to the uh, uh, initiative by the head of service, office of the head of service, actually, as part of their strategic uh, plan for 2025 to basically ensure that all MDAs are also digitalized. Now, a key component of the one government platform is uh, enterprise content uh, management solution. What that does is basically uh, increase productivity by digitizing um, workflow processes of government, such as, you know, memos, uh, approvals, and um, basically anything that requires some sort of manual processes within government. Uh, what the enterprise content management solution, part of the one government cloud as a whole, does is to provide an opportunity for um, seamless file sharing between MDAs. Uh, it has such features such as email, Mm -hmm. um, basically, it features that enable um, the public sector to thrive and be able to deliver on their mandate successfully. All right. Uh, so, so having said that, we know it has to do with you know the public sector and all that. So, how really does it work? You know, who is involved? You know, which people are part of the whole process right now in Nigeria? Right. So, the good thing about it is because of the makeup of Galaxy and as an organization, uh, not only do we uh, are we poised or placed to be able to leverage on our relationship with the private sector because one key part of it is also the public private sector partnership. partnership right so that way we're not competing with people within the technology ecosystem so we do have service providers that are already certified within the public uh, sorry the private sector that partner with us to be able that we've trained and vetted that are able to implement um, these solutions um, through Galaxy and even independently, right? And also for the for the uh, for the MDAs themselves, where Galaxy is perhaps involved, we also also have our own direct involvement in actually implementing the solution across the MDAs. All right. Uh, so uh, now, people, Nigerians out there are asking, how really does this concern us? You know. So my question would be, what really does it do for the Nigerian people? What really does it, how, what does it achieve for the, for the Nigerian nation as, as a whole? Yeah, that's a very valid question. So if you think about it, I think when the uh, president, um, Ashwaj Bola Ahmed Tinubu came on board, there was a renewed hope strategy document that was released. And priority eight of that document speaks to service delivery. And when it talks about service delivery, we're talking about service delivery in terms of how do we, when I say we, the MDAs, Ministry Department and Agencies of Government, uh, provide services to the citizenry. Now, how better would we provide services without, first of all, ensuring that whatever data, whatever interaction that the citizens of the country are going to consume are in digital format? 
What that does is it allows ease of communication, it encourages uh, productivity and collaboration amongst the agencies, uh, and it improves efficiency. So ultimately, communication between the citizenry that are consuming the service and the government who is providing the service is bridged and is a lot, a lot easier and a lot faster. Okay, so you were saying Nigerians can now access public services a lot faster, a lot easier. Is that what we're saying? Ultimately, by the, I think well, the, the MDAs have a mandate, uh, again, you know, from the strategic policy document uh, of the ministry, as well as the renewed hope uh, strategy, uh, strategic plan of the government, that all MDAs must be digitalized by 2025. So what I can say is by that time, um, I can safely say that a lot of the government services that are already digitalized will be consumed in an easier, faster, quicker fashion by citizens of the country. All right. I, I think that's, uh, that's very important, especially coming into this uh, digi the digital democracy, which we have tied this whole uh, theme around. You see, it says, how can Nigeria leverage this digital you know, democracy through uh, the platform like that? How can it work? You know, digital democracy, accountability of the government and all that. How can it work using a, a, a platform like the One Government Cloud Solution? So the One Government Cloud is part of a larger framework, right? The larger framework, I'm sure uh, you've heard the Honorable Minister uh, of uh, Science and, I'm sorry, Honorable Minister Dr. Tijani speak about this several times, which is called Data Public um, DPI, Data Public Infrastructure. Now, One Gov framework is part of the a larger ecosystem of the DPI, which it sits under, right? So what that does is, across a single plane, basically, of interaction between the government as well as the citizenry, right? Mm -hmm. So when we, start, when we talk about things like your uh, driver's license, we talk about things like your, uh, uh, your passport, we talk about things like uh, your NIN, uh, the digital public infrastructure is meant to bring all these things together. And the OneGov platform is just part of that framework. It's just one of those things that's, you know, the sum of all parts that brings everything uh, together. So as the minister has promised, you know, the, the DPI is already work in progress. Uh, Galaxy Backbone is responsible for building the digital exchange because, again, we have disparate uh, forms of data, as you know. Mm -hmm. FRS is collecting data, NIMS is collecting data, but we must make sure that we provide uh, some infrastructure, which is the data, uh, the data exchange platform, that all of these come into, which also includes the one government uh, cloud uh, framework to ensure that there is just one uh, platform, just, pla one, just for everybody one to come in. pain for everybody mm. to come into mm. and to take whatever services you want to take out of it. All right. Uh, we're <coughs> going to be going on a short break, but uh, before the break comes in totally to give you all that, we're going to be having like a spotlight in which you, you see for yourself what the One Golf Cloud uh, solution looks like. And then afterwards, there'll be a break. And when we come back, we're going to be asking our guests, you know, how does this, how do we ensure that this platform does not have a bridge in which, you know, the data of Nigerians are compromised? That will be one of those key things we're going to be asking when we return. Don't go away. We'll be right back. In the digital age, seamless communication among government agencies is crucial for efficient governance. Introducing the Inter-MDA features on the One Government Cloud Solution, hosted by Galaxy Backbone. A secure SaaS solution designed to streamline Inter-MDA communication through Inter-MDA forms, file sharing on GovDrive and GovInmate. One Go Cloud's Inter-MDA form features simplifies the submission and tracking of requests between agencies. But just a few clicks, agencies can submit and monitor their requests effortlessly. GovDrive is a secure cloud storage solution within one Gov Cloud. Offers seamless file sharing capabilities. Easily back up, upload, and share documents securely within your MDE or with other MDEs. Gov an exclusive intergovernment email service ensures confidential communication within the government network. With Gov email, users can send mails and file attachments securely, enhancing collaborations across MDAs. One Gov Cloud and Galaxy Backbone 
connecting government agencies through secure inter-MDA communication. Experience seamless collaboration and enhanced efficiency today. All right, welcome. You're still watching The Beam coming to you live from our studios in Abuja. Mr. Olumbe Akinkugbe is still here with us, and we're still looking at the One Government Cloud solution. Uh, thank you very much so far uh, for the explanation given. Uh, let's get into that data breach thing. You know, there's, there's going to be a lot of data going on this platform. Yeah. How has this platform been designed such a way that the cyber threats which we have uh, prevalent everywhere right now, so that we don't fall prey? How has it been designed so, you know, to, to prevent this? Okay, so um, the One Government Cloud um, platform actually runs on Galaxy Backbone infrastructure. What that means is that it runs on local infrastructure. So Galaxy Backbone has uh, our own data center infrastructure locally in country, which means that none of our data is going out over the internet or into the cloud, as it were. Mm. Uh, we do also do have our own local cloud uh, solution that we provide uh, locally. So pretty much everything is controlled uh, in our control as Galaxy Backbone. Um, this is built on our infrastructure, 100%. And uh, we also have a security operation center we are known as a SOC, uh, which is run 24-7 uh, by our expert cybersecurity analysts who are on call, like I said, 24 hours of the day. Uh, we have multi-level uh, types of security that unfortunately I wouldn't be able to disclose at this moment, but I think what is very key here is the sovereignty of the data because it stays local, mm -hmm. right? Which means it is within our control. And in terms of threats, yes, we do see those uh, happening, but um, our SOC runs 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, uh, which means we also then have, in terms of human capital, we made a lot of investment mm -hmm. in terms of our people. So they have the latest up to skill, they're up to date in terms of the skills required uh, to ward off any cyber threats uh, that may be possible in today's world. Okay, so who's in charge of also training the MDAs when it comes to the use of this platform and all? So ourselves and the combination of the uh, professional services organizations that I mentioned earlier in terms of scale, right? So Galaxy is just so many people, right? So our partnership with the private sector, where you look at uh, a, sorry, a concept that we know as train the trainer. Um, so we've registered as of today over 30 professional services organizations who are more or less like our second leg. Um, but at the end of, at the back end of it, we still maintain um, a high level of control over that. Okay, so take us a bit through how this partnership with, with these uh, professionals <laughs> work when it comes to maybe an, uh, my own agency and these professionals. How do we get to, you know, work together? How does this whole, you know, arrangement flow? Okay, well, so we, as I mentioned earlier, there's a mandate for all MDAs to be digitalized by 2025 and hopefully by before the end of 2024. Mm. That gives us the opportunity to go in there and then basically start that process. Now, as I mentioned, because of scale, we are not going to be able to be everywhere at a, at, at, at a time. So yeah. we encourage private sector organizations, not only in terms of implementation, but also software developers. Because again, what we have created is a platform that is native and allows indigenous software developers to come and plug into that one go of infrastructure, right? Which goes across all sorts of uh, <coughs> um, uh, bouquets or should I say features. I mean, so we have things like data signing, we have things like file sharing, we have like things like GovMail, mm. right? So not everything, not every organization or not every MDA is going to want the same things, right? Because as of today, we have certain MDAs that are still using maybe a different type of uh, uh, email service, for example, right? And we, just, we can't just yank it off. Yeah. So we have to make sure that we win them off this over time. And the best way to do that is there are relationships that exist already, yeah. both with private sector vendors who are already, who were already providing some level of services. So we bring in those organizations and we encourage organizations that may be watching uh, this show today to reach out to us, uh, express interest in partnering with us, they'll go through a training process, they go through a registration process, and then we certify them to be able to go out to uh, um, uh, provide these services and solutions to 
customers. How long does this uh, process take? I mean, the guys who are coming in to want to partner, how long does it take training and all that? Is there... Everything in my, it would, it, off the top of my head, it shouldn't take more than 12 weeks. Because don't forget, these are already organizations that are providing some level of technological solutions and services already. So it's just not that you pick someone off the street and you, you train him and you certify him. So there are things that we look out for uh, in terms of those organizations that we partner with. Okay, so, so one of those things that <coughs> digital democracy tends to want to do is to bring the people closer to the government, yeah. you know, to bridge the divide of trust. Yeah. How does a platform like this, how does it help the average, ordinary Nigerian to understand more of the modalities and the working of the government and to come closer? How does it work? So there's going to be a lot of advocacy that needs to be done, right? Uh, it's not enough for us to just digitalize government process. Mm. Uh, we must also ensure that uh, leveraging on our infrastructure, such as Galaxy Backbone today, who has 5,000 kilometers of fiber cable all over, uh, connecting 33 states of the country, mm. we must leverage on connectivity because only when someone has access are they able to consume whatever data, service, or solution that you are trying to offer, okay? Um, so beyond just the advocacy, we must ensure that we are pretty much we are giving people the opportunity to have access, even in the rural areas. Yeah. And that was one of the key reasons why Galaxy Backbone was established, because um, think about it, an MTN or, well, let me just, without mentioning brands, yeah. Yeah, a, a telco organization would not necessarily invest in a far-reaching uh, uh, part of the country. Why? Because they don't necessarily have customers there. But because of our mandates, basically to uh, provide extend internet services to the underserved, right? It is our responsibility to ensure that we build and complete that fiber backbone mm. to ensure that we're able to reach the last man in Nigeria to have access to the internet and therefore have access to the government services and solutions. Oh, that's a, I think that's a, very, that's a very good one. So if you, if you had um, some encouraging words for Nigerians when it comes to trust, because I'm very keen on <laughs> trust actually, because trust is a very key issue here. Yeah. Uh, Nigerians are saying, how, how are we sure? How can we be a part? How, there are so many questions Nigerians are going to be asking. What would you say that this would really help them you know, to achieve as a people? Or we also as achieve as a people. What will a solution like this? And how much more are we going to do with this, with this platform? Okay, so before I even go into, you know, we're, we're speaking earlier on before the camera started rolling, mm. and I mentioned to you that Galaxy Backbone is not necessarily a retail business, right? Mm. However, we are a facilitator for people that provide retail services, okay? So what we need to do is to ensure that um, the integrity of our service, the integrity of the infrastructure, and to ensure that uh, we have the right partners that are able to go there and send, uh, or sorry, provide the right bouquet of, of solutions and, 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 uh, and services. Trust, um, as I like to say, at Galaxy, we eat our own dog food, right? So we use our own solutions. And I think the FX instability has also provided us an opportunity where uh, a lot of services that were being paid for in US dollars, a lot of services that were being hosted outside of the country, mm. a lot of people are being forced, whether they like it or not, to look in, or inward Go today again, yeah. and then consume the same service. Because I dare say, that the services and infrastructure that Galaxy Backbone has today, uh, providing services like the OneGov uh, uh, framework and platform, can rival anything you want outside of the world. So the only encouragement and advice I can say is, come and look for us, um, have a taste of what it is that we have to offer, and that's the best way I can only say that I can encourage trust in the system. All right, so perhaps local hands can build global brands. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much for coming on the program, sir. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, friends, that's where we're going to call it a time on the program today. Indeed, Nigeria is trying to innovate as the world evolves into digital democracy. And perhaps a tool like the One Government Cloud could bring the gap, or bridge the gap, rather, you know, of trust between the people and the government, even as service delivery from the public sector is optimized to global standards. Thank you for always tuning in to the Beam. And if you have any questions as regards this, please don't forget you can reach us on all our social media platforms. Keep shining your light on the truth. And until next time, I'm Sunes Nathaniel, and this has been the Beam. Stay involved, stay engaged, stay curious. God bless Nigeria. Bye for now.
Our countdown this week begins with a question. Are Nigerians ready for a protest? A poser which stirred conversation on the program, Robin Minds. Protesting is not a gift, right? It is not something that the government say, oh, I have decided to give it to you today. As a matter of fact, Section 39 of our constitution guarantees the right to freedom of expression. In fourth place is a clip in which Nigerian billionaire Aliko Dangote challenged lawmakers to probe the quality of petrol and diesel at filling stations. Uh, Your Excellency, Sir, Honorable Speaker, Deputy Honorable, uh, Deputy Honorable Speaker, the leadership of the House, I want you to even at any time set up a committee that they will come with every representative headed by your chosen Honorable Member to come and lead in taking samples from filling stations. In third place, we see Senator Ali Ndume lash out at the Tipu's former aide, Daniel Boala, saying he's a liability to the Tinubu led government. You know that uh, Daniel Boala, uh, I can describe him aptly as an empty drum making noise around Abuja. Taking the second spot on the countdown is a clip in which Senwa Kimbaloe addresses rumors that he was sacked by China's television. Was I sacked? Absolutely no. At the top of the countdown is a video in which senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, argues that the Dangote refinery saga is exposing Nigeria to unbelievable ridicule. The government cannot go around the world asking for foreign investment only to be accused of destroying local investment. It's very dangerous for the country. It is so embarrassing that we are telling the whole world that the government of Nigeria is so incapable to manage this affair that one person uh, 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 is monopolizing trade in our country. That's it for this week. See you next week for more.